Hello. Hey. <laughs> Good morning. Yep. Good afternoon. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. <laughs> How's everything? Okay. How are your classes? They're going well. Actually, my semester is almost done. <clears throat> I only have a few more classes, and then um, you know I'm on I'm on vacation. Cool. I just have exams started. My exam. Same with me. I have um, I've written a few final papers, and I have uh, one to go, one presentation, and then two tests. So it's mm -hmm. going to be busy, but I'm glad it's the end. Mm -hmm. Do you have mostly papers or mostly tests? Um, it is tests, yeah. Mm. I just uh, have to learn everything that we learn in this uh, two months. Yeah. That's awful. That's, a, that's difficult. Difficult. <sighs> Wow. Well, let's see. Let me welcome who else is here. Um, Rash Rashan, can you hear? Or Cristobal? Can you hear me, Cristobal? Uh, yes, professor. Yes, professor. How are you? Ah, excellent. And where are you from? I'm from Ecuador. I'm from Ecuador. Okay. Excellent. What part of Ecuador? Cayambe. Uh, Cayambe. I'm not familiar with it. Where is that? Uh, it's for 45 minutes uh, from from to capital. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Right. My roommate. I've never been there, but my roommate is from Guayaquil. In Guayaquil. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's probably the hours. Eight hours from my from my house. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's very long uh, distances. Yeah, one hour. Very nice. Yeah, one hour in airplane. Okay. What part, what part of away I don't know. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> um, but he says it's beautiful. He says there's a lot of great seafood, and uh, yeah, he loves it. Yeah, it's very cheap too. <laughs> Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, depends, <laughs> depends on the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Um, and there's good chocolate, I think, in Ecuador. You brought me uh, some really delicious chocolate from up there. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good, well, welcome. Hello. Um, hello, Luis. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can, but I, I mute myself because I have a, a lot of background noise here. Uh, okay, I don't Great. want to disturb the class. Well, thank you very much. That's considerate. Um, and that reminds me that if anyone else hears, like if there's a lot of noise coming from some person, just go ahead and mute that person um, just so that everyone else can hear. So thank you, guys. Um, but very good. Welcome, Lu Luis. Where are you from? I'm from Brazil. I'm living in Rio, ah. but now now I'm in my job. Because of that, I have to move myself. Okay. All right. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Um, Roshan, can you hear me, Roshan? Looks like there. Roshan, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> ah, great. And where are you from? Hello. Hello. Where can you are you from? Me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, I'm from India. Ah, excellent. Excellent. Very good. And are you a student or do you work? I guess I am a student. What do you study? I'm studying zoology. What? Zoology. Zoology. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excellent. So you you study different animals and stuff? 
Yes, 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 about animals. Oh. All right, very good. Well, welcome to Klingo. Thank you very much. And, uh, and Vinicius, can you hear me? Yeah. What's up? Okay, great. Hello, where are you from? Take your shot, man. I'm a, you want me to guess? Statistics are my favorite when I say Brazil. There's a Ooh, lot. Oh, smart boy. <laughs> what part good, of Brazil? <laughs> uh, south. Okay. All right. Great. Um, well, welcome to Lingo. I'm in Argentina, so. Um, oh, really? Actually, yeah. uh, I'm not in South right now. I'm 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 in Rail, but oh, I'm okay. going back to my. Uh, I'm coming. I'm going back to my city. Um, I think next month. Okay, great. So great, great. my city is like uh, really close to Uruguay. So. Oh wow. Wow. Yeah, it's like one That's... hour driving, man. So, what are you doing? Are you are you a student? Or what yeah. Are you... um, and that's like, what. Uh, getting to um, like taking this preparatory course to take this um, university entrance exam. You know. Okay. Great. Great. Good luck. <laughs> Awesome. Well, let's get started, you guys. Um, I have selected a list of um, a website that has a bunch of uh, idioms that I think we should go over. So I will. Yeah. Post that to you guys. <laughs> this should be loud, you're right. So there's the list um, that we're going to be looking at. Um, I'm also going to screen share this. Hey, Christian. Uh, yeah. Have you ever been high? <laughs> that is not an idiom, so I'm not going to discuss anything about <laughs> that subject. So. <laughs> I just want to know that, man, because I feel so good now, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that, you know, we can talk about that as an idiom. Have you been high? This is a fresh expression that means, have you been on drugs? Yeah. So, there you I've go. I've been that's, on heavy that's drugs, crazy. man, like crazy shit. Dude, this class is about idioms, right? That's right. Oh, that's why yeah, I just this, went over This there. website, Free Dictionary, oh yeah, it's really good. Another one, it's really good, it's Urban Dictionary. That is a good one. That's a good one for learning up, you know, terms like that. Yeah. But, Actually, um, I, I, I learned, like, uh, Butterface <laughs> using the Urban Dictionary. That is a good expression. <laughs> <laughs> now, Vinicius, we're going to continue on now. So if you have any more comments like that, um, type them into the chat. Okay. Uh, would you? <laughs> Sounds good. Um, all right, guys. Well, here we go. Here's a, our first um, list of idioms here. So, if you guys see any that you would like, go ahead and uh, and type them in, and I'll try and answer them. Otherwise, um, yeah, actually, that's the best thing you can do if you have a question. Uh, let's see. So let's see. What's the best one here? Cover up. I like this one. Cover up. To cover uh, up something uh, means to means kind of like um, to hide it. Yeah. To hide it, yeah. and um, so if there's a politician who wants to cover up a scandal, it means he, you know, maybe was has a photo with a prostitute or something, and so then he tries to cover it up by, you know, like making sure nobody finds out about it. So that's what cover up means. It means to hide. So I I would say like um, 
Um, you're carving up his things. Um, you could say he tried to cover up the photograph of him with a prostitute. So huh. <laughs> you, it just means to hide it and make sure no one else finds out about it. Okay. But I mean, um, this is a cover up, it's a phrasal verb, right? Um, yeah, it can be used as a noun or as a verb. So you can either say there was a cover up. Yeah, I mean, or, like, what, when you use cover up, it's a phrasal verb, right? But yeah, right. So I should say I cover up something, or I cover up someone, or... Uh, exactly, but you try to cover up, like, the scandal. He tried to cover up the scandal. Oh, yeah. Um, which just means to try and hide it from... Um, from the press, from other people, from the public. I tried to cover up my mask from my mom. Yeah, exactly. Like if you threw a party and then you want, you don't want your mom to know about it. You know, you'll try and cover up the fact that there was a party. Yeah. For example. Very good. Um, let's look at one of these other. Ones. Half a dozen. Half a dozen. Okay. Half a dozen. Half a dozen just means six. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is a. Um, it's kind of a common expression if you say like half a dozen donuts, for example. You know, people know you mean six. Um, so that's a. It's kind of odd. Phrase um, because a dozen is twelve. I don't know why a dozen is twelve. I don't know who chose that. Um, but half a dozen. If you want to say six, you can say half a dozen. Let's yeah, see. but you could also use like um, something. It's um, it's not really hard to get it, right? It's half a dozen. Yeah, exactly. It's an, probably an easy one to learn. Um, it's a little more difficult to use, I would say. Like the next time you're asking for something that's six, you have to remember to say half a dozen. That seems like a, um, you know, pretty hard. When it's easy is when, like for example, here in Argentina, they sell eggs in packs of six. Yeah, uh, nobody would say half a dozen as like referring to a number. They would say like the yeah. uh, expression. Yeah. So they s Do they you sell. Speak Spanish? Yeah. Oh, it was easy for you to learn Spanish. No, it wasn't very easy. But I luckily I did things um, like just listen to music and uh, listen and read the lyrics. So that's how I learned. But I didn't have anything like this to help me out, which would have been really cool. Oh, okay. I, I lived in Mexico, you know. Oh, and I, so you yeah. learned Spanish. Yeah. But Very nice. It's really, then we, it's really then we different. Then we are in the same boat because yeah. that's an idiom. That in means that we were in the same situation. Um, you were in the same boat. <laughs> yep. We were in the same boat when we were living in a Spanish-speaking country. Because yeah. we had to learn the language, we had to do this and that. So that's what it means to be in the same boat. It means in the same situation. Um, so if somebody, if somebody did poorly on an exam, and they were complaining and say, "Oh, don't worry, we're in the same boat," um, I also did poorly on my exam. Dude, have you been able, Have you have you been um, capable of doing some girls? <laughs> capable of doing. I'm not sure if that is what that means. <laughs> capable of doing. Um, I just like <laughs> was the first one I, I, <laughs> I came up with. Of doing. What is this? What's a good way to say this? If you're capable, capable of, doing of uh, I would say capable of um, hooking up with some girls or capable of making out. 
yeah, if you're capable of doing something, that means that you can do it. Um, it when you're capable, that means you're able, and if you're capable of doing something, that means you're capable of, you know, playing piano. Yeah. For example. I'm capable of playing piano. All right, and if anyone else has any of these that they would like to learn, please type it into the chat box. Um, and I'm also going to show chats from everyone. Hopefully, um, those are coming through with chats from people just watching. Um, but yeah, anybody who would like to have to learn an idiom, please type it in, and I'll talk about it. Um, here's a good one. I like this one. Oh, and um, and Vinicius, if you could type in your questions, that would be better. Just to um, you know, keep the keep the conversation down at least initially, and then we can talk about things later. But it's just um, I think other people are have recommended that we do more talking about idioms and less about you know doing girls <laughs> and doing drugs. <laughs> Okay, man. Very good. Crash I got and you. burn. Here is the next. <laughs> here is the burn. next one, which I think is great. Crash and burn. When you like try to do something and you just fail, that means you crash and burn. If you tried to learn piano, um, but you just really couldn't do it, you could say, "Oh, I tried, but I crashed and burned." Um, it just means it's kind of like a think of a race car that just crashes and then explodes. Um, that's the metaphor that you're using for yourself um, when you just can't do whatever you thought you would do or whatever you tried to do to crash and burn. Definitely a good one. Alright. Um, I'll tell you this. To fail miserably. That's what crash and burn means. All right. Well done. Well done. This means, um, oh, Luis, I'll talk, I'll answer you. This face up. Face up. Let's see. I don't see this one on this list. Oh, here we go. Face up. I'm not sure what it means, so I'll look it up. It's a good problem. Courage. Someone or something representing a threat or unpleasantness. Oh, I see. Um, so, I usually somebody says you have to face. You're gonna have to face. I guess face up. So basically, it just means um, you have to confront someone. You have to, you know, even though you don't want to confront someone, you have to just say something. Um, if someone is doing something that's hurting you or whatever, like in this case, it's the boss, to confront your boss. Um, you're simply going to have to admit your mistake and face up to the boss. So it's kind of the, in that sense, you're kind of embarrassed about it. You don't want to talk to him, but you're going to have to. So to face up just means to be honest or to, to talk to somebody candidly, either in a um, confrontational way or you're saying, Listen, please stop playing music so loud at night. You might say that to your neighbor. That's facing up to your neighbor. And you don't really want to talk to your neighbor because it's rude, but on the other hand, you need to sleep. Um, so it can either be that style or this style, which is the boss. Um, you know, you don't really want to admit your mistake, but you have to admit it. Um, all right, well done is the other one. And this is easy. It just means, you know, good work. Um, well, that means good job, and it just means, you know, it was, whatever you did was done well. So, well done. Here we go. So, to go down that road, if you go down that road, um, this is talking about kind of the, if you're making a choice, that might help. I don't know. When someone says, oh, you went down that road, that means 
that you know you made a series of choices and they feel like they know what, what you did so if you you know maybe get a girlfriend or something and then your whole life revolves around you with your girlfriend then your friends will be oh man you really went down that road of having a girlfriend and all your life is revolving around that um, instead of you know going out with your your guy friends or with just your other group of friends um, pretty much all your life is is going down that road. Let's see what example they have for this one. To decide to do something in a particular way. So we're thinking of automating our finances, but if we go down that road, we'll need a specialist advice. So this is saying, it's just talking about choices that you have. You can either automate your finances, or you can do it yourself. So if you choose the automating your finances, you're going down that road. Let's see. I like this one. Bear in mind. Oh. So if you bear something in mind, that means just keep it in mind. So you would say bear in mind that bear in mind that your neighbor is sleeping with the windows open, so keep the noise level down. Keep your music down. Um, just means bear in mind, keep it in mind. Let's see. away. Yeah, this, I'm seeing a bunch of these I like. Does anyone see any one that they like? Anything they want to type in? I didn't know most part of these idioms. You don't know most of these idioms? Yes. It's true. There's a ton of them. A ton of them. Um, so, basically, I need to... The thing that I'm doing is just going and, and looking at the ones that I like, the ones that call my attention. So, um, so like... No. If there's any that, that you like, anything that you think are interesting, that's where, because yeah. we, have, we have to basically choose which ones we want to study, so we might as well choose the interesting ones. Uh, I, I have a question. Um, yeah. um, most of these uh, 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 we use in real speech. Uh, yeah, these, some of these are not but some of them are. So I'm trying to focus, the ones that I focus on are the ones that I would use in a real speech. Um, uh, so that's basically what I try to do. I just look at them and see the ones that I use and then if I use it, I'll talk about it. Um, because I'm, there's no sense learning things that are, that are really obscure that you'll never use. But this is a good website if you do see an idiom. This is a good one to, to go to this website and look it up. Um, all right, let's see. Vinicius typed in to pass through. Let's see. To pass through. Well, pass through means if you're going to pass through a town. If you're, gonna, if you're driving and you just pass through a town, that's what that means. So you're driving from one town to another town and you go through another one. Let me say we're passing through that town. Uh, I I couldn't say I was passing um, through this newspaper. Um, no, that's not that's not what it really means. It means if you're passing through, it's more about like talking about space, which is where you're passing through a certain space or passing through a certain uh, town or you might be passing through a desert or something. Um, you could also say that a rainstorm is passing through. If there's some clouds above you and it's raining, um, but it seems like it's just temporary, like it was, it was sunny in the morning, and then there's rain, but you think it'll be sunny later, you can just say, oh, there's a rainstorm passing through. 
What's the difference if I say like I was passing through and uh, I was passing by? Is it the same? Um, yeah, it's more or less the same. I think I would use passing through for something that you're kind of something bigger, like a town where you're actually going through, and maybe passing by would be one particular store. Oh, I'm passing by the Starbucks. Um, I'll be at your house in a few minutes. Um, I'm passing by the lake. I'll see you soon. But um, passing through is more something like, um, I don't know, maybe you're passing through the mountains, you're passing through the desert, or you're passing through the woods. Passing but through I mean, sometimes you can infer what, he, what it means just by the prep preposition, right? Like, passing by, like if I say I'm walking by, I mean, this by, it has the same meaning, right? Yeah, yeah, it just means you're going, you know, you're going yeah, by something. just like he said, drop by. But because, like, if I say, like, um, oh, I'm going to have to sleep over, and then I say, oh, I'm having a few people over, I mean, I'm using over with the same purpose, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, you're right. It is pretty much the same thing. When but how can I have, that. like, a pattern between, uh, among the, those prepositions? Can I? Um, I think the, the only pattern would be if you're, you know, through would be through something bigger, and by would be, yeah, by has the, has the meaning of when you're, you know, you're passing something. Something is going by you. Um, so you're right. Any That has the same connotation, passing by or um, going through. Basically means the same thing, except going through is for something a little bit bigger. Yeah. Or like, um, like he said, like stop by or, um, I don't know, swing by. Yep. That, those are both good. Drop by, swing by, stop by. Those all mean, like, come over. Um, basically, the, the full expression is stop by my house or drop by my house, um, swing by my party. Just could means you say, to, to come in. Okay. Could, could I say, like, come by? Yeah, you could say come by. You could say come by my house. Um, but come by That's could also mean required, right? Um, yeah, I think come by means um, means something that you're going to find. If you're going to, if, like you could say, we might come by a gas station, which means we might find a gas station. Um, or we might come by an extra set of skis, so you can borrow those skis. Um, so yeah, come by means, let's see, we might. If I say like, uh, how did you come by with this, this, um, I don't know. How did you come by with this new car? Yeah, you would say, that's it, that's good. You would say, how did you come by this new car? And that means, how did you get this new car? Um, yeah. Or how did you come by your house? Which means, how did you acquire your house. Oh, but you just uh, you, uh, come by your car. You don't say come by with? No, just um, just come by. Okay, acquire. Yeah. And Elson, to answer your question, drop by. Yeah, that's good. It's the same thing as come by. Um, if <laughs> you're going to drop by my house, that just means come, you know, come over. Okay. Very good. Nice work, guys. Let's see. Idioms. Yeah, idioms are, are confusing. You guys have a lot of idioms, man. Yeah, there's... I, um, I'm kind of like uh, trying to um, create some patterns, you know, to analyze them. Like. Yeah, um, there are... They're difficult because they're so, um, they're not literal expressions, and there's 5,000 of them, so yeah, they're definitely difficult. <laughs> um, yeah. But here's one. I had a lovely time.
Had a lovely time. Oh, that's that's easy. Kind of an idiom. Yeah, kind of just a, a, a phrase almost. Not really an That idiom. would be an idiom, I guess. Let me write, let me type yeah, it. It doesn't sound like, um, yeah, I had a blast. That would probably, that's more of an idiom because it's not the, the literal translation, but um, yeah, both of these mean the same things. I had a lovely time, I had a blast, um, means it was a great time. I had a great time. That's what those mean. Um, and those are very commonly used if you want to, you know, just say thank you for, like, you know, going over to a friend's house, just say, oh, I had a great time, um, I had a blast, um, that was fun. That's another way to say that. Very good. Here's the name. Tomorrow's another day. Oh. In STEM. Let's see. STEM, 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 STEM. I'm trying to, uh, oh, to see what you mean. Stem. What? Ah, uh, from STEM to STEM. This sounds like a naval expression to me. Um, so this is a naval expression. It's talking about a, a boat. Um, and from STEM, you know how there's that front part on a boat that kind of looks like the stem of a flower? You know, stem of a flower is that long kind of stick. Um, it's the bottom part of the flower. Um, kind of the pole that has the flower sitting on top of it. So that's the stem, and that's what it means on like the front of a boat. And yeah, Luis, this is a Navy expression. Um, so the stem is on the front of the boat, and stern is on the back of the boat. That's just the back of the boat. And so it just basically means the whole ship. <laughs> so if you need to clean your house from stem to stern, it just means you need to clean the whole thing. It, um, you need to clean the floors, the ceilings, the, you need to rake the, the yard outside. Uh, you need to clean the whole thing. Okay. And, yeah, it's interesting, these Navy expressions, because... Um, I don't know. I nobody really, you know, knows much about boats these days. I wouldn't say some people do, but most people don't. But we do have a lot of navy expressions in our language. Oh, that's some solid knowledge, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Let's see. All right. All right. Count me in. Oh, count me in. Count me in means um, if somebody says, "Hey, we're going to um, to the movies this this weekend. Do you want to come?" You say, "Yeah, count me in." That means, "Yeah, I want to go. I want to be a part of the group." Um, basically, just means consider me um, part of the group. Consider me part of the group means count me in. Um, so I, it's, I guess they're saying, oh, there's five of us going. Oh, count me in. Oh, now there's six of us going. So there's you no know, one more person in this group. And that's mm -hmm. easy. <laughs> if somebody says, I don't know, it's just a, a good way to say, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going. To scoop up. To scoop something up means to, like, to just pick it up in your arms. So if you scoop someone up, you might, you know, give somebody a hug and just pick them right up. Or if you scoop up your your backpack, you just pick it up off the ground, um, usually really quickly. Um, it just means to pick it right up. Let's scoop something. Yeah. Yep. I want to see what this is an ambulance chaser. Um, so, an ambulance chaser. This is an interesting one. And it basically just means, like, it's not very common, I would say. But, um, you know, there are lawyers who, <laughs> who only, like, 
work with people who have been injured. Um, and this is that type of lawyer. An ambulance chaser goes around like following ambulance to find the people who've been hurt who um, then want to like, I don't know, if they got hurt at a construction site because something fell on their head that um, the lawyer would talk to them and then they'd go sue the boss of that construction site or something. Um, so that's what an ambulance chaser is. But let's look at Vinicius' question. Um, Virgin out. Man, all those expressions, where, where does that come from, man? I don't know. I mean, um, this, a lot of, <laughs> of idioms, I mean... Yeah, I mean... You guys have some French influence, or what is it? We do have some French. Um, you know, English is basically a combination of German and French. So we also have that Latin root. We have Greek roots for some words. It's definitely a, a total, complete mix of all languages. Uh, not, not any Asian languages, but, like, at least with the... Rom um, romantic and Germanic definitely have a lot of influences. Yeah. So to burgeon out, um, this means develop and grow rapidly. It's the first word. The flowers burgeoned out and made the garden beautiful again. This isn't a common one. I don't usually use this one, but I guess it's good to know to burgeon out. Um, so I wish I know the um, I wish I knew the etymology of this, how it, you know, how it originated, because I don't know about it. Do you this one? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that this is someone who um, is is very knowledgeable of something. So a wine connoisseur is someone who just is very skilled at tasting wine and knows all about wine. Um, so that's what a wine connoisseur. connoisseur is. That's how should I pronounce? Connoisseur. Connoisseur. Yep, connoisseur, and that is connoisseur. Uh, a French French origin, and it basically it almost means an expert. It means an expert yeah. in something. So if you are a um, connoisseur, connoisseur of foods, or exactly, exactly, it means that you love them, you know all about them, and um, you're definitely an expert. You know, I've heard people saying connoisseur, yeah. <laughs> but you said connoisseur. Yeah, let me look it up just to be sure. Um, because if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, I'd like to know it. <laughs> um, let's see. So here you can see connoisseur here that this this means accent. So this syllable has the accent. So connoisseur or connoisseur. Either one of those would work. Um, okay. So let's see if it'll it'll play it for us. No, I don't think that'll work. Unfortunately. Oh, maybe I believe it's Did you guys hear that or no? No, I guess not. Connoisseur. Connoisseur. Very good. All right. Very good. That's a great word. That means expert. All right. Um. Oh, go down in history. I'm sorry. I should have written. No, that's a good one. To go down in history. If something goes down in history, that means it's basically um, going to be remembered. 
So, for example, the you know Barack Obama was reelected. So we, it could be said that his election will go down in history, uh, which basically just means it'll be remembered, it'll be written down in history books. It will be epic. Yeah, it'll it's epic and it's going to be remembered. I like this one. Tickle to death. Um, so this could be... <laughs> Tickle to death. <laughs> uh, if something, if you just find something very funny, um, and you just are laughing like crazy, you could, it could be said that you're being tickled to death. Um, just you're laughing so much that you're about to die. That's a great expression. Um, you can say. So I could say I was tickling to death. Um, it it's more of a passive word, so you could say it tickles me to death. Okay. Because it's you're kind of receiving the action. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's a good one to, to talk about if there's a, a funny TV show that you can say it tickles you to death. Um, yeah, that's probably the way that you would use that the most. Or if there's a particular YouTube video that you just watch over and over because it tickles you to death, that's <laughs> how you would say it. You do that, man? I love YouTube. I think <laughs> I... Sometimes I find really, really funny videos on it. Let's see. Oh, here's a good one. A diamond in the rough. So, a diamond. If you're going to find, if you might find a diamond in the rough, which basically just means if you find, um, if you find a, a diamond in like a, Basically, the rough is talking about an area that's really ugly with rocks and bushes and nothing really pleasant. But if you find a diamond in the rough, that means you find a diamond amongst all this, you know, ugly landscape. So you might say that if you're walking through, you know, kind of a neighborhood that isn't very pretty, but then you come across a rose garden, you could say, oh, I found a diamond in the rough, which was this rose garden in the middle of a bad neighborhood. Or if you find just a really nice cafe in the midst of, I don't know, a really boring neighborhood, you could say, I found a diamond in the rough. Um, so that's, the, that's kind of the sentiment where even amongst all these ugly things, you find something really, really nice, a diamond uh, or any other thing that you like. Let's see, I like no less. No less just means you could say it kind of just adds emphasis to something. Let's see what they say. So they say that it add it adds emphasis because it's surprising to me and it must be surprising to you. I happen to own the very same sweater, and in green, no less. It just means that you know you're su you're excited about it because it's kind of random. I happen to own the very same sweater, and in green, no less. Um, so it's not sarcastic. Um, it can it can be used as sarcastic because it's kind of formal. Um, it's it's kind of like old timey. It's kind of like, um, almost like a grandparent would say this. So, oh. in that sense, it, it can be used sarcastically. Because it's really old school. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Oh, that's another... What did you say? That's another idiom. Ah, old school, you're right. That's an, that's an idiom which just means... Um, Kind of, you know, old-fashioned, retro. Um, yeah. So if if somebody's wearing shoes that are old school, they're just like the basic, like the Good. old school Converse's, the old-fashioned ones, the old school Nike. Yeah. 
tacky. Sometimes it can be tacky, but yeah. sometimes it can be cool. Like, um, like if somebody's wearing an old school, I don't know, an old school jersey. It's like one of the original ones, and it has that coolness to it because they're no longer produced, and they're kind of like really rare. Oh. Sometimes you guys use like this one. Like sarcastic, right? But it, it means like um um I don't know. If you were uh, I could give you an example like oh his English is so good that if he was living in the US right now his in, his English would be ridiculous. Like it would be really good. Yeah, you're right. Ridiculous can mean um, one of two things. One is like just ridiculous, and a basic level means silly. It's like, oh my gosh, that was ridiculous. Like that. Did you see that comedy skit? It was just ridiculous. On the other hand, ridiculous can mean, um, yeah, very good. And you say, oh my gosh, yeah, his English is ridiculous. Um, or, you know, he's a, he's, he's a snowboarder and he's ridiculous. That means he's a great snowboarder. He goes off a lot of jumps. Um, so ridiculous just means so good you can't even believe it. If somebody's ridiculous at, at you know, playing, um, playing soccer, it means they can just juggle the ball. You know, on their knees, on their head, with their feet. This means so ridiculous. That's a good one. Let's see. Also, you could say, he kicks ass, right? Yeah, you can say that. You can say that. It just means, you know, he's very good at it. Um, exactly. Exactly. But you could also use kick ass as a noun, right? Like I have a kick ass confident. Um, well that would you can use it as an adjective, which means, you know, basically just describing something. Um, so you know, like you said there, it, that's more of an adjective because it's describing um, confident. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's not a noun. Yeah, you're right. right. And so that would be um, you would use this among friends. You wouldn't um, tell your boss that you did a kick-ass job. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's it's that more would of be kind of odd, right? Yeah, that would um, <laughs> that would, that be would just, awkward and funny. Right. Right. It could be said that it would raise a few flags. Um, and this is another expression which just means, you know, it kind of shows that, that something is wrong. Um, if something, or like raises, if something raises a red flag, um, this means like, um, you know, kind of something is wrong, and so that wouldn't be good. Um, that's what to raise a red flag means. Yeah. So, very good. Very good. Yeah. I typed, he, he would think I have issues there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he would think, um, he would definitely think that there is an issue with you working there, and he would probably <laughs> fire you. Yeah. All right, let's see. Luck to see. Here's a good one. Um, very classic, I would say, like from the, the 1950s United States, um, a knuckle sandwich. Oh, 50s? Yeah, I'd say 1950s. Knuckle um, sandwich. Yep, and a knuckle sandwich is just, it's a way to say a punch. If you say you're going to give somebody a knuckle sandwich, it means you're going to give them a mouthful of knuckles, which means you're going to punch them in the mouth. <laughs> so that's a... Nobody really says that anymore, but it's it's definitely in older movies. 
it's an older movie, so if you hear it, you'll know what it means. Oh, you guys say this one. No, you, I, but I mean, I know it's really like old school. Jinx. It's an example, I mean. Yeah, that's definitely <coughs> a little old school at this point, just from maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, but it basically just means like, oh yeah, girls, they like a certain thing. Yeah, uh, or it could, also, it could also mean like um, to understand, right? You dig... That's true. It can also mean to understand. Um, like you feel me? <laughs> exactly. Uh, it seems to me that that you dig as a um, as an expression to mean. Do you understand? That seems a little outdated to me. It sounds like um, something from like the seventies or something. But yeah, that's what it means. And it's I guess it's still used today, and it definitely still comes up in popular culture. Like in movies yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So good to know. Definitely good to know. Let's see. If you here's a good one. Man of a few words. If you're a man of a few words, a few words. This means that you just you don't talk very much. Um, if if you're like, oh, um, I'm glad I met your dad, but he's a man of few words. That just means you know he. He is very stalwart. He sits there and he doesn't really say much. Um, so that's what a man of few words means. And that's that's not to be confused with the man of my word. Because yeah, that, I know. That's I just what, like. Yeah, it's definitely related. Um, yeah, it's related. I'm a man of mean, my word. Exactly. It means that you're not going to lie. You're honest. Very good. Let's see what else. To see fit. Hello, everyone. Ah, hello. Who said that? Was that Shady? Man. Hello, everyone. Hello. I can Hello, teacher. Hi, how are you? Fine, fine, thank you. Great. And um, so right now we're just, we just, we really only have a few more minutes, but we're going over our idioms. So if you see any idioms on this list um, that you would like to know, just type them in and, and we'll talk about them. So I just typed in to see fit. If you see fit, if you, for example, um, Someone might say, do whatever you see fit. So that means do whatever you think is necessary. Um, so someone says, do what, what you see fit. That means do what you think needs to be done. And it kind of is like a, a a very formal way to say that, um, but it's also that's what it, that's what it means these days. Maybe it has its formal origins, but now <clears throat> that's what it means. Um, so keep an eye out for that. If somebody says "do what you see fit," that means you know do what um, do what you think should be done or what you think is right. Let's see. Here's an interesting one, not too, um, not too useful, but it's one of those that you would not know. It does come up. Sometimes it, um, it comes up. A house of ill repute. This is basically the very formal way of talking about um, a brothel or, you know, basically... <laughs> or house. Exactly. So 
so this is used metaphorically these days because back in the day, back in the 1800s, that's how like the upper class would talk about, oh, he spends most of his time at the house of ill repute. So and it's kind of a negative connotation. And so now, now if someone, you know, if some, if there's a, a group of parents who always let their kids have parties, for example, you know, the, the people would use this term kind of um, symbolically or to say, oh, that house is, that's a house of ill repute. It just means um, either it's a, you know, it's basically a brothel or it just means uh, it's, um, you know, a lot of a lot of bad things happen there. There's a lot of drinking and stuff like that at this house. So that's what it, it kind of has that negative connotation. So this is, um, yeah, when you say that party was ill or sick, it just means, oh, that was great. That was a great party. Um, so ill, sick. They just mean, um, well, what do they mean? They just, they're kind of modern day phrases that mean, like, basically awesome. That's what those mean. Um, but you pretty much only use that when you're in fraternity houses or when you're chilling with your bros. Um, but you wouldn't describe an opera as ill. <laughs> So it kind of has its context among, you know, pretty much 18 to 24 year old boys. Man, that's the same situation of, uh, of turning a paper into your uh, boss, just like, oh, this is a kick ass job, you know. Right, right. It has its, um, it's definitely one that's a little more geared towards, you know, the colloquial. Um, college scene. Yeah. Let's see. Well, you guys, we have reached the hour here. Um, so, we're, you know, we finished up. Thank you guys for sticking around. Um, and real quick, I will answer Snoozy's uh, question to turn the corner. If you turn the corner, that means you, you kind of um, picture yourself walking along and then turn in the corner. It means changing the way you're doing something. So if you're kind of a bad student and then you turn the corner, that means you start studying, you start writing things on time, that type of thing. So that's what it means to turn the corner. Thank you. Very good. You guys, thank you very much. It thank was you. a pleasure. Um, we'll, talk, uh, we'll talk sometime soon. I'm teaching again in one hour. So if you want to join me, then go for it. Peace, yeah. man. Very good. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. He's a man of few words. A man of my word.